Welcome to the third part of Lecture 4, John Napier and the Logarithm Tables. The title is Adding to Multiply, the Log Table Revolution. So we're going to now talk about log tables. If we have to multiply two seven-digit numbers together and get a seven-digit number as the answer, that is a horribly tedious problem to go through. If we have to do roots or powers or other things like that, it's even more terrible to imagine trying to do it. Using logarithms reduces the multiplication problem to an addition problem. And that's because the logarithm of the product of two numbers, the logarithm of x times y, is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. Furthermore, roots can also be found since the nth root of x, if I take the logarithm of that, that's just 1 over n multiplied by the logarithm of x. So here's an example. What if we wanted to calculate the cube root of 36,000? The log table would show two entries. On the left-hand side would be the step, which I've written as 12.809. It would actually be the 12,809th step. And here would be the 12,810th step. And you can see on the right-hand side are the actual numbers themselves. You can see 3,600 lies in between those two. To figure out exactly what fractional step 36,000 corresponds to, I have to use interpolation. And using that, we would find that the logarithm of 36,000 is 12.80998. And so then the cube root of 36,000, the logarithm of it would be that number divided by 3, which would be 4.26999. Now I got to go back to my table and find the 4,269th point nine nine step. I'm going to use interpolation again and find the number that's associated with that entry, and I find it's equal to 33.019272. Now you can go get your calculator and evaluate the cube root of 36,000, and you'll find that that is indeed the accurate result that you would get for it. However, if you take the logarithm or you take the log base 10, you'll find neither of those are equal to 12.80998. The base for this table is determined by how the steps are made. And in this particular case, those steps are not made either with the natural logarithms or with the log base 10. But the point is one can do complex and accurate calculations with these tables. And that is a huge boon to science and engineering. Generating them is really mind-numbing. In this particular case, we'd be looking at at least 23,000 entries we would have to generate. So how is it actually done? Well, if we're going to do a four-digit table that requires 2,300 steps, and each step is a new entry in the table, the entries would then be equal to 10,000 times 1 plus 1 over 10,000 raised to the power step. So we have the following, and here's where the genius comes in. We start with step 0, which is 10,000. Step 1 is 10,000 times 1 plus 1 over 1,000. I can work that out fairly simply. Step 2, I multiply again. Step 3, I multiply again. And you can see that the numbers are slightly different than what you might have initially guessed they are. And you might ask yourself, well, how exactly do I calculate that? Well, we actually don't do any multiplication at all because some number x multiplied by 1 plus 1 over 10,000, I can distribute the x inside the parenthesis and I get it's equal to x plus x divided by 10,000. Well, now x divided by 10,000 I can easily get. I just shift the decimal point by four places. And so it's easy to add those numbers together to get the multiplication. I then truncate anything that is beyond the digits of accuracy that I'm going to maintain. The challenge with this, however, is if you make any mistake on any entry at any particular step, all subsequent entries are wrong. So you really have to be careful and make sure you do these tables and make these tables accurately, otherwise you're going to run into errors. So if we work in base 10, that's the most natural thing. But to do that for a seven-digit accuracy table requires 23 million steps. 
and no one in their right mind would imagine trying to take the time to do that. In fact, it would probably take 50 years for one person to generate such a table, and if they made a mistake in year 23, all of the rest of that work is worthless. So this became a real problem for people who were trying to generate these tables. Now, then comes in John Napier, and he, along with contemporaries, he wasn't the only person working on these problems, figured out some tricks to make making these log tables viable. And they did not do so by uh, pairing up with people and having some people work on the 23 million entries versus others. In fact, if you think about it, that isn't something that could even be done. But instead, they used some very clever ideas, which I want to share with you now. So the first thing to note is if I computed a table with a step given by 100 times 1 plus 1 over 100, and I looked at all of those steps, and I wanted to use that data for a step made with 10,000 multiply by 1 plus 1 over 10,000 raised to a step, it turns out that these two tables are related by a fixed ratio. So if I can multiply the first table by that ratio, it'll give every hundredth entry of the bigger table. The challenge is figuring out that ratio. It isn't such an easy thing to figure out. It's not directly or simply related to 110,000. It's a little bit more complicated. And that was what John Napier figured out. So once he had that, he could then calculate the first hundred entries. Of, he would first start by calculating the entries of the table generated with the hundreds. He would then multiply by this factor and he would get every hundredth entry of the bigger table he was interested in. He would then only have to calculate the first hundred entries of the bigger table, and then all further entries would be found by addition with every hundredth entry that he had already determined. And so using this strategy, you could then generate all of the entries of the table, of these tables, in this hierarchical fashion. And that's the way you get from an impossible task to one that is really quite doable for generating all of the tables. Now, Napier used the base E for his tables because they are the absolute table that has the simplest ratios. But once you start trying to do calculations, you very rapidly find that if your table is done with E, it makes trying to extend the table so that you can use it for all of your calculations really rough. But if you work with a log base 10 table, it's much more practical. And so eventually, the log base 10 tables were made available. Now, in an unfortunate result of history, uh, John Napier made a mistake on one of the steps in his table. And so all of the results after that error were, of course, wrong, because that's the way these tables were made. So his tables had to be redone and rechecked and corrected. Uh, it's also true that he died before his work was ever published. His son was the person who published his work. And so he never really got any of the notoriety that he deserves for the work that he did in building it. The tables had a huge revolution when they appeared. They allowed Kepler to complete his astronomical calculations and devise his laws of planetary motion. Kepler did not trust Napier. He didn't know him at all, so he actually ended up generating his own tables, and he got some of the basics of the ideas, but then also worked out some details of his own to make it possible to make these tables. They allowed computation for science and engineering to take place and essentially ruled the day for almost 400 years. And so it was a very important development in technology. Now today, with the availability of electronic calculators, or for those of you who don't even have electronic calculators anymore because you just have an app that you put on your phone, these tables are really an afterthought or a curiosity, and you may have never even heard of them. But in the day... They were really important, and it's important to learn about them because they have this incredibly important history, but also because they bring in some very interesting new ideas about computation that help us understand how to perform more complex ca calculations ourselves. And I will admit that back when I was a youngster, I actually did look at some of these tables and actually did some calculations with them before the calculators really came out and were widely used. And I'm sure none of you will ever need to pour over these tables to do calculations yourself, but I still think it's an enlightening journey to understand 
how they were made and what other people had to do to appreciate the level of work that they needed to put in to do the science that they did. A lot of the additional details of precisely how these tables were made and the math associated with those breakthroughs is described in great detail in the book. And I have a little bit more about the geometry in the notes that accompany the PDF files in, that are accessible on the website. And I encourage you to take a look at those and delve just a little bit more deeply into the details of this.